Okay, so I'm back in Blender now. We're going to pick up from the previous video where we've created our UV texture, ready to start applying the UV maps from our objects to that texture. The last time we were in Blender, we were modeling our bucket. So if you have the same scene open, I'm just going to hide the bucket for now and go back to our rocks. I'm gonna hide one of these rocks. Uh, we'll hide rock two for now and start off with rock one. So this is gonna be our focus for today. We're gonna get this one unwrapped and textured. We'll probably be able to move on to the second one as well, actually, to be fair. And I've just very quickly paused that to put on my screencast so you can now see which buttons I'm pressing. So with the rock selected, the first thing that we need to address is this doesn't yet have a UV map. So I touched on this previously. There's a couple of ways that we can do this. And like I mentioned in the last video, I'll show you very quickly how to do both but we will be finishing off just for tidiness really uh, and to get used to the process we'll be finishing off by adding a proper seam around this so that we get this cut into two nice halves so first of all so that we can visualize this rock and the uv unwrap if we go to the uv editing tab over here and remember i'm just pressing n and t to remove these side panels we don't necessarily want these to be shown uh, just to free up a little bit of screen space the first thing is going to be the smart UV unwrap. So inside of edit mode, just press A on the rock. This already kind of has a mapping done to it, but again, that doesn't look too great. And if we put some of the uh, visualization for the UV mapping on this, we will quickly see if we apply the stretching is the one that I was looking for there under view, we'll see that this is stretched quite a lot because it's just been distorted and changed whilst we've been modeling this. So we want to, first of all, make sure that none of this is being stretched. So if we have everything selected over in the right hand window, press U, Smart UV Project, uh, leave those as the defaults. This is just gonna change the uh, size of the margin, so the distance between them and things like that. But the default settings will be perfectly fine for this. Press OK to that and you can see that that is already a lot better. Like I mentioned previously, it's a little bit messy. It's gonna be a little bit hard to see which bits link up to which bit of the model. And that's why we're gonna go through the full process of unwrapping this properly. But like I said, in a, in a kind of tight squeeze, in a game jam, or if I was just prototyping something which I knew the model wouldn't be used in a final product, then I would probably just go ahead and smart UV project it and stick a colored texture or something on it. Uh, especially background props and things. But for learning's sake, we're gonna go through the process on all of the models so that we can see how very different models will be unwrapped differently. So it's fine to leave this. There's no need to uh, control Z or remove this. We'll just override this in a moment. So what we want to do is I'm gonna go into edge mode. So that's pressing two to get the edge mode. Start selecting a line that we want to unwrap around. In the demonstration, I very quickly went for a vertical line. I think it's probably going to be best for this rock to have the line going horizontally. We want to try and hide as many of the seams as possible. When it comes to light baking and things like that, it's going to be the seams which will show any weirdness in things like ambient occlusion and baking. So we're just going to shift select around the rock in a horizontal line to cut this roughly in half. Now another quick tip that we can do is we can hold left control and click a few lines and that will join from the most recent one that you pressed to the one that you've just selected. In this case it does mean I need to deselect those two lines and then we can keep going around again uh, shift selecting uh, individual ones and then maybe control clicking over here and we can probably control click just to finish and join those back up. So you can see how it makes a nice line from the most recent one that you've selected to the last one. Now because this isn't going to be seen very much the seam on this isn't going to be a huge deal we probably could have tidied up a little bit more, but again, that's kind of halfway around. So that's the sort of thing you're looking for. With your seam all connected, we're gonna press Control and E, and this is gonna give us our edge loop options. And under the edge loop, we can mark our seam. So this should turn your seam a solid red, and this is gonna be where the UV is unwrapped from. So I'm gonna press A to grab everything, press U, and then this time, rather than Smart UV Project, we will just be using Unwrap. And you can see that that has put those Quite nicely, again, there's a tiny bit of stretching, but we're not actually adding any texturing or detail which is going to require the size to match up on this. So that tiny bit of turquoise stretching isn't actually gonna be that much of a problem. If you wanted to fix that, then you'd just do things like adding another seam somewhere you might not see it, just to allow the, the model to be cut from a slightly different location to ease up those edges. Uh, you're also gonna to want to know where that issue's occurring. So I think I've cut that somewhere where there wasn't actually a stretching issue. Uh, yeah, you can see that was cut from there. Uh, but by doing that, you still see that the small amount of turquoise that was on that edge has been eased up because it's been allowed to be cut in a different way. So in this case, what we'd actually want to do is maybe mark a seam along here. And again, like I said, 
some of this isn't going to be relevant or even kept in uh, the final design that we make but this is just so that you can get an idea of how you can approach these issues and fix them if you do get these issues on your own models so with those selected we can mark those seams and again we'll select everything and unwrap those and you can see there now that that's split those off the turquoise color has been uh, re relaxed and eased up the stretching just there and if we find where that was done so the issue was over here on this part but now th those changes i will actually undo i'm not going to keep those in like i said we don't need to worry too much about the stretching in this um, and i'm just going to control click to get rid of these control e clear seam and again we'll just do one more unwrap so this is very easy to go in and out of the unwrapping process okay now to finish this rock up what we want to do is we want to apply the image to this so we want to give this a texture and the easy way that we can do this i've just noticed we've not even assigned a material to this one yet so we're going to go down to our materials we'll give this a new material uh, we'll see if we have any available so what we can do as well is we can start working with just a single material now so it doesn't really matter which one but this is going to be the material that we apply to almost every object in our scene apart from the lamp that we want to have that emissive color so I'm going to go over the now that's perfectly fine and then if we go down to the base color of our now material uh, we can see that that's been applied because we now have a darker gray rock if we go into the material preview but what I'm going to do is go down to the base color press this little circle icon next to this and we want to add a image texture so the image texture that we want for in this is going to be our texture we created previously so we need to open this uh, so we'll select open and then simply navigate to wherever you saved your grid texture and load that in so for me that was the desktop so i've just pressed open found where that was saved and loaded that in and you can see that this is now taking the color from the texture so where some bits are overlapping we've got some weird colors going on here so back in the uv window now i'm just going to press a to select everything again uh, and remember i think for me the rock color was this one just here. So I want to fit all of the rock UVs into that single color block. And we can see that we now have a nice kind of gray blue rock. If I move this over, then we have a brown rock and down we have kind of a sandy rock. So this is how we're gonna be using the UV unwrapping for our rock. Now do keep in mind as well that all of the UVs will be stored in one place. So if you have a lot of rocks, you're gonna to need to make this a lot smaller. You don't want this to fill up the single grid space because we're gonna unwrap our other rock in a moment and that is also gonna be going on the same grid location. So this is why I said in the previous video as well is that if you wanted to make these really small, like a 64 by 64, uh, then that's perfectly fine because we can just keep shrinking down the UVs and putting them into smaller grid spaces. So these don't need to be ridiculously small in this case, but we do need to make sure that we've got space for the second rock. So with that done, I'm just gonna go back into object mode. I'm gonna hide this rock and then reveal the rock two. I'm going to do a very similar process just to get this one finished as well. So the first thing is I'm going to immediately apply a new material. So we'll find our nail material and then we'll just, that one is automatically assigned. So again, we kind of need to fix this up and get this mapped correctly. Now this is going to be nice and simple and there's another thing I wanted to introduce now that we've seen how to do this in a very simple way. We can turn on a few tools over here to make this a little bit easier for us. So the first thing we want to do is turn on the UV sync selection which I'm hovered over right now and this means whatever we select in our UV edit or in the model edit will be mapped and shown in the other window. So this makes it very simple where you could see I was struggling earlier to find out where the stretching was this would have been a very simple way to fix that is because then i could have clicked on i uh, can see obviously this is very green so we're going to want to find rid of where that is i can click on that and i can see that directly correlates to this square over here uh, i didn't want to go straight into that as i felt that might have been too much information all at once but for the uh, future uv unwrapping especially on some of the harder and more complex models this is going to come in handy quite a lot so we're going to use our uv sync selection so with that done i'm just going to press double a to get rid of everything and again, we're going to make a fairly decent connection. I'm just looking at where we can add our seam around here. So if I start from here, I'm going to control and select and see how this does. That's perfectly fine. And it's just finding all of the nearest connecting edges as I'm control clicking to go around this. And I think actually this is going to be quite nice because assuming that this is the bottom of the rock, in fact, if we go up here instead, that's going to be fairly decent UV cut. Um, no, I want to go around here. So I think that's going to be a nicer and less stretched out UV map. And then I can shift select to get rid of these that I tried choosing down here. But the main thing is we've got all of this matching up now. So we can press Control and E, mark seam, press A to select everything, U, and then unwrap. So 
It's a little bit uneven, doesn't really matter too much. Again, we could probably fix that up. And I think in this case, that is actually so uneven, I will be doing that. So I'm just going to shift select around here, maybe control down to here. And I think actually what we want to do is to try and get almost half and half. This is a very, very square kind of design. So it's gonna be a bit of an issue. So we'll mark that seam and then we can come in and just reselect all of these and clear these seams down here. I think I missed one. Okay, so again, I think we might be able to get a little bit of a better cut if we choose these as well. So Control-E, mark seam, and then shift select these, Control-E and clear seam. And I'll keep all of this in just to show how to tidy things up and the UV mapping isn't actually that scary. Now, another thing that we could have done then, which would have helped, is we can press U uh, with all of these selected and we can turn on the live unwrap option that we have just here. Uh, we also want to come over here on the UV drop down in the left hand window. We also want to turn on the live unwrap here. And what this does is as we start adding and removing seams, that would start updating how this is going to look for us as well. So you can see as I just add a new seam just there, that completely changes and unwraps for us. All that's really doing is that when I press A to select everything and then U and then choose unwrap, it's just doing that unwrap selection for us without us needing to go into that. Now another way you can also do this a bit faster if you wanted to skip a step is to select everything. So press A in the right hand window, hover your mouse on the left hand window, which is the UV editing window, and just press U there and that will automatically unwrap for you without needing to go into this drop down and selecting unwrap. So there's many different ways that you can get this unwrapped. It just comes down to how you prefer to set up your workflow. Now that looks a lot better for me. Um, again, we can come in and you don't need to add loops that always connect. So we can see that the stretching that's going on is down here, which I am struggling even with this turned on to find on the model. Uh, but what we can do is if we were to just add in a line cutting this, so we can mark a seam there again. This is if you kind of imagine like cutting into paper, this just allows you to unfold that certain bit of paper which might be crumpled up. So you don't always have to have a line connecting to another. If you just need to ease one area, because again, this is a bit too much of a large crease, then we can open that up and it allows that paper to kind of unfold uh, the seam. Now, the only problem with this is I always forget the exact details, but the main thing to keep in mind is that every seam is actually extra data for the engine to compile. And I think it's something like an extra polygon per seam. So if you imagine there would be an extra polygon there and there. So that chunk is now actually four polygons rather than two because of the seam that's been marked. So do try and go quite sparingly with the seams. Don't just add them absolutely everywhere in small single cuts like that to, to remove stretching because that will add extra data to the model. But sometimes, uh, there it is, uh, but sometimes that is something that you just need to do, uh, especially in higher detail models and stuff. And I just wanted to make a point that you don't always have to go from point to point uh, to like connect to comp the complete other side of the model. Uh, so with all of that noted though, like I mentioned before, this isn't going to be an issue having a little bit of stretching on this. It's not going to affect how this is rendered or lit in the engine. So I'm just gonna grab these, shrink these down, and then move that over to the other side of grid. So again, I'm gonna have the same color. And if we remember, I think this rock, we go into edit mode with both of these selected, then we can see that the UV maps are not touching. So you can go in, and what I've done there, I realized that was a little bit fast, is in object mode. If we shift select both of these objects in Blender 2.8, uh, we've got a really nice new feature where we can then go into edit mode. So I've pressed tab to go into edit mode and you can go into edit mode with multiple objects selected and then work with both of them as you would normally like. So this is going to allow us to really easily see if there's any overlap in the UVs, uh, especially inside of Unreal when you start doing light builds. If there are overlapping UVs, then you will get warnings about this all of the time uh, and it can cause lighting issues depending on how you have your lighting and light map set up. Uh, now another good thing about this is if we press A twice to deselect everything, uh, if we go into face mode, so I've pressed three to go into face mode, because we have our sync enabled, what we can do is press L whilst highlighting over one of these parts of the rocks and L on the other side. And that will give us just the selections which join, which will be that one whole rock. Uh, and it notice as well, it's specifically being cut off by this seam. So we're gonna get everything up to the edges of this seam. And then if we press L again, everything up to the edges of this seam. And that would just allow us to come in and move things around and size things a little bit. Even whilst we're in edit mode for two different objects, we get some kind of freedom with this uh, using L to select those. And we can do the same thing in the UV selection. So I can press L on one of these objects and then L on the second one. And now we have the whole of the second rock selected. And again, we can scale these and move it around as needed.
And there's no need to keep these as close together as well. If you wanted to come in and maybe move this over, you can press G to move these around. Uh, but with all of that done though, that is the rocks UV'd and ready to go. So we can now save that project, make sure that we have that progress saved, and we can start moving on to some of the more complex stuff, which will be getting some nice tidy seams on things like the fence posts and applying those to the correct parts. So I'll leave that video here for now though. As always, if you enjoy these videos or find them useful, please do leave a like and share the video around. That is always greatly appreciated and really helps the channel and to get this hopefully useful content viewed by more people. And of course, if you wanted to be kept up to date with any of the content coming from any of the playlists on the channel, do consider subscribing and making sure you hit the notification bell to actually be kept up to date with those notifications. As ever though, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.